bring up my presentation and then we'll get rolling. Awesome. And everyone, we should let you know that we are recording this webinar, so it will be posted on Cash Academy afterwards, um, just so that you're aware of that. And it is on Facebook Live. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sue. And thank you for the opportunity to be with everybody here today um, to put this on Facebook so that hopefully even folks who aren't available right now can check it out later. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about health insurance benefits, how they work, how we can use them right now, even though things are a little bit weird, uh, and how we can use them to stay healthy, which I'm really excited about. So we're going to dive right in. So the goal for this is to help people understand how to get and use your essential health benefits, and then also to, how to understand them. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by essential health benefits and, and all the stuff that I'm saying here, but um, that's, that's really our goal for today. We're gonna cover you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes, uh, and we're really gonna focus on essential health benefits. And the main questions that we're gonna address are, why is it important to get and use the essential health benefits? What are they and how do they relate to this COVID-19 pandemic and situation? And how do I receive my essential health benefits? So hopefully by the time we're finished with all this, everyone is gonna come away with a really great understanding of how to be smart and how to use the, but all the wonderful benefits that come along with a health insurance plan. Okay, so why is this so important? Why did I reach out to Stu and ask her if I could have a little bit of everyone's time to talk about this? You know, why is it such a big deal? One of the biggest things we know about the essential health benefits are that they help improve the health of both adults and children. And hopefully that's gonna make a little bit more sense when I go through the different uh, essential health benefits. But really what we're talking about here is we have research that says when people use their health insurance, not just for um, getting treated for a condition or going to urgent care, but when they use their health insurance for checkups and you know, screenings and all sorts of other things, they tend to be healthier. And because they tend to be healthier, it tends to save them money. So uh, whether you recognize it or not, the cheapest time to manage a health condition is really to, to prevent it and not ever get it to begin with. Um, but hopefully, if we can you know, keep people healthy as long as possible, we can also make sure that they're not having to manage as many health care costs. Maybe people have to manage right now. And when we can get people into a situation where we're addressing problems before they become really significant, um, and we're keeping people in a state of prevention rather than treatment, that lowers the cost of healthcare for everyone, which is a really good thing when it comes to health insurance plans. So there are a lot of different reasons that it's really important to get and use essential health benefits. Um, so what are they? We keep talking about essential health benefits. What is the deal with essential health benefits? Okay, so hopefully this isn't too long ago for folks to remember, um, but under the Affordable Care Act, which was passed in 2009, it established essential health benefits. And basically what it said was, okay, to be considered a health insurance plan, for us to call you health insurance, you have to cover 10 different things. Um, and this particular part of the Affordable Care Act is still part of the law today. Um, there have been some attempts to change it. There have been some association plans and different things that, that people have been able to offer. But generally, almost any health insurance plan that you get is going to cover these 10 services that I'm gonna describe, okay? To be called health insurance, it's gotta cover these things. And the reason for this is because um, before the Affordable Care Act, when people were trying to make plans less expensive, they would cut some of the different services so that they could not have to cover those things. Uh, and then they'd be able to set the, maybe the premium for the plan a little bit lower. When I go through this, hopefully it'll make more sense. Okay, so what are the essential health benefits? First, it includes prevention and wellness services. And this was one of the big things that came out of the Affordable Care Act. Hopefully it's something uh, that you've heard about before, but under the Affordable Care Act, it basically said, we're providing as much prevention and wellness service as possible with no cost, okay? So that's why things like regular checkups, you don't have to pay a copay for, um, if you're going to the doctor, to get a vaccine or a blood pressure screening or some of these different prevention things, um, you shouldn't have to pay anything out of, out of pocket for those services. Uh, so that was a really big part of the Affordable Care Act was saying, okay, we're gonna make sure that we're covering not just treatment, but prevention as well. Lab tests are included. 
uh, and that would be like getting blood work done to test for a condition or something like that. Um, hospitalization, so if for some reason uh, you're ill and you need to go to the hospital and, and become in, you know, in, uh, inpatient at the hospital, that should be covered. Prescription drugs need to be covered. Um, services and, dis and devices for injuries, so this would be things like um, crutches, a, an insulin me measure, um, some of the different actual like medical devices that people need to manage different conditions. Outpatient care, so um, you may have heard that sometimes you go to the hospital, but they don't take you, they don't admit you, you're, you're outpatient, that should be covered as well. Maternity and newborn care, so having um, well baby checkups or maternity checkups while you're pregnant. Behavioral and mental health treatment, this is a really big one that sometimes wasn't covered before the Affordable Care Act was passed. So um, this particular part of the law we refer to as parity, which means that mental and behavioral health treatment have to be covered in the exact same way as any physical health condition. So plans have to make sure that they are equal when they're covering um, mental and behavioral health treatment. So they can't make it more expensive to seek mental and behavioral health services. Pediatric care, so be after a baby is born, then all of that um, look, stuff that kids need as they get older. And then emergency room services as well. Um, so these are the, considered the 10 categories of essential health benefits. And when I say that they need to be covered, what I mean is that within the plan, there is some amount of coverage. So if you've ever seen your evidence of coverage, which is that big document that your health insurance company sends when you sign up, usually it lists like co-insurance percentages, which is basically the insurance company's way of saying, hey, if you go to the hospital for this, I'm gonna pay this much, and you're gonna pay this much. Um, and so that's the co-insurance breakdown. Um, that's, this means that there has to be some coverage for all of these different services. They can't be covered at 0%. In some cases, if you go out of network, they might not be covered, but there has to be at least some in-network coverage for these things. I wanna come back to preventive and wellness services for just a second, because they're so important. Um, screening for high blood pressure, doing colonoscopies and mammography, when your doctor says that it's time for those things to happen are really, really important for keeping people healthy, okay? So I just wanted to make sure that I reiterated that these preventive and wellness services are really, really important. And again, they have that kind of special level of coverage under the Affordable Care Act. They have a little bit more um, coverage. And most times you should be able to, if you're in network, get preventive and wellness services and it shouldn't cost you anything out of pocket. That's really, really important because it removes one of the barriers that was really, really big when it came to people being able to access these services that they really, really needed. So I just wanted to remind everyone, you know, prevention and wellness, really, really important. Okay, so we've talked about all this stuff, gone over it just a little bit, kind of high level overview, but how do you go about receiving your essential health benefits? So you know that they exist, you know that they're included in your plan. How do you actually use them to see the doctor to be covered for certain treatments or conditions? Okay, so if you, if you aren't already, you need to sign up for health insurance. If you're already signed up, then you have the essential health benefit. If you have a health insurance plan, the essential health benefits are included in that plan. If you need insurance, you can use what's called a special enrollment period. Um, so Maryland had a special enrollment period activated during this coronavirus pandemic. As far as I know, it closes today. Um, so if you don't have insurance right now and you need to get signed up, try and do that today. Uh, they may reopen that. It depends on if, if there's a big need in the community. Um, you can also use a special enrollment period if you were to lose a job for some reason. You have 60 days to get signed up for new insurance um, and you can do that on the marketplace. Um, for Maryland, that's healthcare or MarylandHealthcare.gov, I think. But I'll share the links when we get to the end. I'll, I'll put them in the chat for everyone. You can also use open enrollment. So if you have health insurance, but it hasn't really given you what you want, you can also use the open enrollment time, which is usually fall into early winter, uh, to get signed up for a new health insurance plan, to switch health insurance plans, that kind of thing. So the most important part is to make sure that you're signed up for health insurance and to make sure that you're paying your premiums because if you are not paying your premium, which is like that 
monthly fee that you pay to be a part of your health insurance plan. Uh, if you aren't paying that, then you won't be able to access these benefits. Okay, so you've got health insurance, you're paying your monthly premium. How do you access your essential health benefits? Really, most of the time, it's gonna be through a visit with your healthcare provider. And almost always, it's gonna start with a visit with your primary care provider. Your primary care provider, your PCP or your primary care physician, that is the main doctor that you go and see. Um, if a lot of people talk about, oh, I need to go see my doctor. That's usually their primary care physician. Uh, and so that's the doctor that you go to when you need your annual checkup. That's the one that you go to maybe if there's something going on that you wanna get checked out. Uh, and so hopefully you have a relationship, a doctor that you see regularly, that you've seen for a long time, that knows you really well. That's where you might wanna start. Um, keeping in mind that right now that visit might be in person, it might be virtual, or it might be a call to your doctor's office. So say you get out your, your information and you're looking into, you know, oh, I have access to maybe counseling with a dietitian through my healthcare plan. You would be able to call your doctor's office and maybe get a referral to someone who's in network. You could also go through your insurance company as well. Um, and so those are usually services that are offered by your health insurance company. When you sign up for health insurance, you should get a card and that card might have a website or a phone number. Uh, and usually you can call or go online, access that information. And then you can see what kind of services are available to you under that health insurance plan. Okay, so kind of two main ways there, visit with a healthcare provider or contacting your insurance company. And that's how you should be able to um, take advantage of maybe any extra benefits that you have um, or your regular benefits that are just gonna kick in when you need to go to urgent care or you need to see the doctor for some reason. Specifically for COVID-19 testing and treatment, we wanna think about right now, you can get COVID-19 testing and it's not gonna cost you anything out of pocket. Again, in some locations, depending on where you are, you still will probably need to call your doctor, get in touch with your doctor's office and get an order uh, or a referral to go and get the test. Um, but then you can go and get it and you shouldn't be charged for that. If you need treatment, you can do the same thing. Um, call the doctor's office maybe and explain your symptoms, see if they think you should go to the emergency room or urgent care. But keep in mind that your, your main primary care doctor's office is a great initial contact point for you to call and get information. Many times they have um, a nurse hotline where you can speak with a nurse and explain the situation or someone from the office and they can make a suggestion. You know, well, we have appointments tomorrow. We think you can come in then. Um, that sounds more like an urgent care situation. I know a couple of years ago I was at work and my stomach was really hurting. And I mentioned it to someone at the office and they said, oh, you know, you might need to go to your doctor's office, you might need to see what's going on. You know, do you have a fever? I'm like, yeah, maybe a little bit. <clears throat> so I called the doctor's office. I said, hey, um, I have a little bit of a fever. My stomach really hurts. And they said, uh, we'd like you to go to urgent care. I think maybe that that's a good idea. So I went to urgent care and they ordered some tests and said, yeah, it's your appendix. You need to go to the emergency room. <laughs> So I was able to start with my doctor's office for something that I wasn't entirely sure what to do about, and they directed me to the right place, and I got all the right care that I needed from there. So keep in mind that calling your doctor's office, sometimes even insurance companies offer like a nurse hotline or helpline. Um, you can go through some of those places. But right now, you can also access um, some virtual visits health insurance companies right now have really expanded how much they're allowing people to access online. Uh, so you might be able to get a visit with a doctor for some sort of um, small thing that you want to get managed. Like maybe you have, like I know one time my eye had a sort of a swelling thing that was going on and I got a virtual visit. I was able to do it from my office during my lunch break. I got on a chat with a doctor and said, what is this? Uh, and they were able to tell me what was going on and what I needed to do. And I didn't have to leave work or take a sick day or anything like that. So sometimes the virtual visits can be really, really helpful. Um, and they're really expanding how much is covered under those virtual visits right now. A little bit more on the testing and treatment. Again, as I mentioned, the testing should be, pro should be provided at no out-of-pocket cost. You may need to get an order from your doctor in order to get the test. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that if you if you do test positive for COVID and you need treatment for some reason, um, it'll depend on your insurance company and your state policy as to how much you end up paying out of pocket for that treatment. Right now, some of the different states and insurance companies have said, you know, if you're on a state managed plan, we're not going to ask you to pay anything out of pocket for COVID treatment. Or if you're on um, a certain health insurance plan, that health insurance, the phrase that they're using is they've waived cost sharing. So cost sharing is when the insurance company pays some and you pay some. So if they waive cost sharing, then that means that um, you are not responsible for your portion. Okay, so you might want to check what's going on with your insurance company, see if they've waived cost sharing. Uh, and that's just a good thing to know because it might help give you some peace of mind that if you needed to get treatment for some reason, maybe it won't be as expensive. I want to go over just a few key points for making sure that you're using your insurance really well. And the first, as I mentioned before, is to make sure that you're paying your monthly premium to maintain your health coverage. For a lot of people, this is going to be something that comes out of your paycheck every month. It's not something you have to actively do, especially if you're getting your health insurance through your employer. It's called what we call payroll deduction. So before you even see your check, it's gonna have that money taken out to cover your health care. Um, if you are someone who carries health care for maybe your whole family or for your spouse or for a child, you know, you'll see that all of that comes out at once. If you pay through, you know, if you're self-employed or if you have to pay into insurance on your own, you might actually have to set up that reoccurring monthly payment, but you really want to make sure that you are consistently paying that monthly premium because if you were to stop paying it, the health insurance company could then say that they are not responsible for your health insurance costs, your, your health care costs, because you weren't paying your monthly premium at the time. So it's a really big thing to be aware of. I mentioned this a little bit, but in-network versus out-of-network. So uh, in-network doctors are usually less expensive. And again, those you can find that out by calling a doctor's office, by reaching out to your health insurance company, uh, and getting a list of in-network doctors. But staying in-network is really, really important. Um, and in-network just means that that's a group of, of healthcare providers that your health insurance company has said, hey, we know how much they're going to charge for this. We've talked to them about it. We have a fee structure set up that we're both okay with. So when you're in network, usually you pay less out of pocket and you don't usually have as many um, balance billing things or, or those kind of weird cost things that can come up and really frustrate people. It's good to get in the habit of also making sure that your doctor is still in network at each appointment. So doctor's offices can sometimes um, maybe have some frustration or some struggle when they're dealing with a health insurance company or a particular plan and say, you know what, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to deal with that anymore. Uh, and they can choose to stop taking certain types of insurance. And it's possible that that might happen um, between one, you know, between two of your visits. So you might go in once and they're in network and you might go in the next time and they aren't. They aren't. So it's really important to say when you know maybe when they ask you for your insurance company, hey, I'm just just double checking here, you're in network for my insurance plan, correct? Uh, and they should be able to answer that for you. Again, that's just one of those things that you can do to make sure that you're not going to get hit with a really big bill that you aren't expecting. I, and I'm also not saying that you know you can, you should avoid going to the doctor if you can't go to a doctor that's in network. I'm mostly saying that when, when it's possible for you to ask questions and um, go, choose to go to a different place, you want to try and stay in network as much as possible. Again, if it's an emergency, you got to go where you got to go. That makes complete sense. And make sure that you're using all the health, essential health benefits you need. So like I said, there are 10 essential health benefits. Not everyone is going to need all 10. Um, but you might need one of each at some point in your life. I know I've needed a cast. I've needed, uh, I went to the hospital for my appendix. I've, you know, needed all sorts of stuff at different points in time. Um, but it tends to be the ones that are more related to prevention, um, that are more related to working with maybe a wellness coach might be offered through your health insurance plan. Those sorts of extra things that maybe we aren't aware of. Those can be the ones that we either don't know about or tend to forget about, 
So if you've got access to things like that through your health insurance plan, take advantage of it. I always liken it for people to, you know, if I were paying for a gym membership and my gym had a sauna and a pool and all these different things, and I only ever went in and walked on one treadmill, then maybe I'm paying for a gym that's more expensive than I really need. Maybe I could sign up for a less expensive gym membership. So make sure that if you have paid this money to be a member of this plan, that you're really taking advantage of all the services that it's providing to you. And then as much as you can, you wanna plan for out-of-pocket healthcare costs. Uh, out-of-pocket healthcare costs are those things like co-pays that you pay right when you get to the doctor's office. They're the co-insurance, which is the, you know, what you're paying. You could also consider your premium to be an out-of-pocket cost. And the reason I say that is you just want to know what those kind of costs will be. Um, you know, how much your copay is for certain prescriptions and things like that. You want to know how much those costs will be so that they don't end up surprising you. Um, you know, one of the things that my coworkers and I have noticed is that like if you're looking at a um, budget, a household budget, it doesn't include medical expenses a lot of the time. And for some households, medical expenses might be a significant portion of what they're paying for in different prescription costs and things like that. So planning for out-of-pocket healthcare costs, including it in your budget, can be a really big step towards making sure that you're not ending up in a situation where you have this really massive surprise medical bill. And again, at the end, I'm gonna share some resources so that um, if you want to see, we have a um, spending plan that includes medical expenses as one of the items. If that's helpful, uh, then you can take advantage of that. We have a list of some reliable resources here. These are some of the ones that I'm gonna be putting in the chat, um, but healthcare.gov is the national healthcare website. It has some really great information. Um, extension.umd backslash insure, that's our uh, extension website that we use to put out our information and resources for folks. I'm going to be sharing some stuff from there as well. All right, so I know that the, if there anyone, I can't see at the moment, but if there's anyone joining us on Facebook Live, I won't be able to see uh, any of the things that you share, but maybe Sue can pass them along if there are some of those things. For now, I'm going to take a look at the chat. Carrie, this time we don't have any questions on Facebook Live. Thanks. Sounds good. And thank you for putting the healthcare.gov link in the chat here. I'm going to pull up just a couple of other things. So I'm going to put in the chat our link to our consumer resources page and the extension. I'm also going to put in a link to our document that we have that is um, helping people estimate and make a good guess for out-of-pocket expenses. And that is a like a fillable PDF tool that folks can use to figure out how much you might have to pay out-of-pocket for the different healthcare things that you need in your particular life. Um, I also want to share this. So this is my contact information. Uh, my email is there if you have a particular question that, that you know you need me to share with you. It's C-J-R-S-O-R-E-N at U-M-D dot E-D-U. Um, or if you'd like someone to come and do some of these um, health insurance trainings for your organization, we have five different modules that we offer around learning about how to use your health insurance effectively. We're gonna be offering a series of health insurance um, topics through the month of July. So we'll be kicking that off fairly soon and we'll be covering uh, health insurance basics, how to understand and estimate costs, how to understand and use your health insurance benefits. A little bit of that is what I went over today. Um, and we'll be piloting or you know, presenting our new module, which is health insurance disputes. So we'll be going over how do you, um, argue is maybe a strong word, but how do you disagree with your health insurance company? How do you um, make sure that they cover something that you think needs to be covered? Um, we're gonna be going through that a little bit for folks. The QR code is for an evaluation for me. So you can hold your phone up to that. It'll take you to a link uh, that asks you a couple of questions about how I did with my presentation. And if folks have time, I'd appreciate that. Let me make sure I don't have anything else here. Yeah, so just a big thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, or if you are taking some time and watching this on Facebook later, thank you for um, taking some time out of your day to learn this information. I hope that it's helpful to you and that it will help you to use your health insurance in a way that can help you stay well, especially right now 
Um, I also want to share, let's see if I have that link here. I might have to pull it up. Um, there have been some really great uh, pieces that different people have done. I didn't link to those in the presentation, but it's really important right now to keep in mind if you're unsure about whether or not you should go to the doctors right now. Um, really, the number one thing to do is to get in touch with your healthcare provider. There are a lot of folks right now who are unsure of, you know, is now a good time for me to come in and get this particular screening? Do I need to keep doing checkups with my doctor right now, or am I better off staying at home? Can I do a virtual visit to do some of this, to cover some of the things that, you know, I need to make sure I have covered? Those are all questions that folks have. And unfortunately, because everyone is so different when it comes to their age, their health status, where they live, what their provider is capable of offering, I don't have one answer that I can give that'll fit for everyone, uh, except to say, if you have any questions at all, if you're unsure at all about whether or not you should be doing something as it relates to your health, reach out to your healthcare provider, reach out to a doctor's office, see if you can speak to someone from your insurance company um, because they wanna hear from you. They wanna make sure that you are not missing out on health coverage that you need to stay well, to stay well and stay healthy. Um, so really make sure that you are not canceling appointments without speaking to a doctor first, um, that you are reaching out and making sure that you are in communication with your doctor about whether appointments need to be rescheduled, um, moved to a virtual setting, any of those different kinds of things. So that's my number one takeaway for all of that is reach out to your doctor and make sure that you can talk with them and get the right information for you, given what it is that needs to happen, what kind of visit it is that you need, your health status and, and that whole picture for you as an individual. Um, so if there's one key point I wanna make sure that everybody gets today, it's that. Stay in touch with your healthcare provider and have them help you figure out how to manage your healthcare needs right now. Cause there are ways that you can make sure you stay on top of everything. All awesome. right, yeah. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for this great information. Um, we certainly are, are well aware of how much uh, medical cost and health insurance you know, is critical to a person's financial well-being as well. So, and I echo um, your thoughts with everybody on the webinar or listening to it later is, is please take care of yourself uh, first. And certainly if you have questions, you know, reach out and, and you know, there's people there that, that can help. So really appreciate you taking time to deliver this information today. It was great. Um, again, this webinar is being recorded. It will be up on Cash Academy. Of course, it'll be on Facebook Live. Um, and we hope that you are able to take care of more classes and, and workshops through the Cash Academy. So feel free to go online and take something else. We also really want to thank the Frederick Coalition for Financial Success, which is a local financial capability organization um, located in Frederick. But now, you know, with its great educators such as Carrie, the information is going to be able to get out statewide. So we certainly appreciate the partnership with that group as well. So we are going to um, end today's presentation. And again, it will be posted up on Cash Academy within a few days. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Have a good day.